Eric, you're all good. Okay, here we go. Uh, hey, it's uh, Eric Anderson here with Cisco. Uh, I'll be here with Cisco uh, 31 years next week. Uh, been working with Len Richter for since 1983. So, and I think they uh, Walt mentioned it and Ray mentioned it. I'm uh, working part time now, uh, pretty much three days a week, taking all the uh, um, emergency calls and uh, so forth. Um, but anyway, uh, leaky sims. I mean, uh, this is a pretty common problem that I get calls on during the weekend and during the week. And uh, actually last week, uh, we spent two days uh, troubleshooting uh, the sims and uh, replacing analyzers. And uh, the problem was there was a leak. Uh, there's a miscommunication or communication problems while troubleshooting. Um, the customer uh, told me he had zero during the leak check. I said, what's your O2 reading? And he said zero. And he was looking at the, uh, the NOx analyzer. So we wasted uh, pretty much two days uh, troubleshooting that um, leak on that system. And uh, where we could have taken it, taken care of it within, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour. And also, funny thing, he said, well, I just replaced the pump, sample pump. Well, okay. You know, sometimes you put a new one in and it's bad. But I found out when he said he just replaced it, he uh, replaced it in January. So <laughs> typically they'll last a year. But um, they do fail, the diaphragm goes. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, go through this, uh, leaky sims. Uh, you know, problems we'll see, uh, daily calibrations failing, uh, CGAs and linearities not passing, process values not as expected, not normal. And uh, we really need to take care of it uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I did have a, another customer that ignored it, and uh, they ended up uh, getting an NLV. I mean, nobody wants that. Um, so anyway, let's uh, go through these. Uh, you know, we can say there's two types of leaks. Uh, negative pressure or vacuum leak, uh, positive pressure leak. They'll both uh, cause you calibration failure, CGA and linearity problems, inaccurate process values. And, uh, you know, some people think, well, positive leak, I'm just, uh, you know, leaking a little gas into the shelter. That really isn't a good, good idea, uh, depending on your concentrations. Let's talk about the uh, negative pressure leak. Negative pressure leak will dilute the process gas and calibration gas with ambient air. This will give you high O2 readings and low process values, your NOx, CO, SO2, hydrocarbons, etc. Uh, it will dilute the daily calibration gases causing calibration fails, calibration drifting. It'll also affect the uh, quarterly CGAs and linearities. And sometimes they don't show up until uh, we do our quarterly stuff. Uh, positive pressure leak. Uh, again, it'll uh, introduce uh, process gases into the shelter or cabinet, which could be hazardous uh, uh, depending on concentration. You know, we're seeing more and more uh, ambient monitors in the shelter, oxygen, uh, carbon monoxide. Um, so it's becoming more popular to, you know, monitor the gases inside the shelter there. You know, some people are in there for hours. Um, 
and it could be hazardous to your health. So, also a positive pressure leak will give false indication on the total system flow coming into the system. You think you're pulling down six liters per minute by adding up the, uh, the sample flow meters, and you're actually pulling down 10 liters per minute. With your calibration gases at seven liters uh, per minute going up the stack, you're going to get a calibration fail. Some people like trying to snoop the fittings. Uh, it's a little hard. Well, of course, you can't do it on the on the vacuum side uh, of the pump and the pump back. It'll um, it'll suck it in. I don't. I've never had any luck with that or known anybody. I'm sure you could probably see some uh, liquid going in, maybe. But uh, on the pressure side, you could possibly see. Um, a leak coming in or some some bubbles on the pressure side of the pump regulators and to the back of the analyzer. How to determine if there is a leak. So basically how to do a leak check. So we're gonna put the SIMS out of service. We're gonna put manually put the uh, system in the cabinet mode and energize the O2 zero gas solenoid. So we're flowing the zero gas in the cabinet. And we're gonna zero the O2 analyzer. After the O2 analyzer stabilizes in the cabinet, it's usually only takes about a minute. You, know, you might wanna wait two minutes. So we're gonna zero the O2 analyzer in the cabinet. Then we're going to manually place the system in the probe mode for the Cali cabinet valve and flow the zero gas. Okay, so we're flowing the, the zero gas up the stack and uh, we're gonna go through a print here in a little bit. So I'm just uh, going through these right now. Make sure the calibration gas is greater than the total sample flow, including the uh, bypass flow. So you're going to add your flow meters up. You might have two, three, four uh, separate uh, sample flow meters going to each of the analyzers and the bypass flow. So the result is the, okay, it's the, the zero in the cabinet mode is zero and the stack mode is greater than 0.2% oxygen, this indicates a leak in the system. And that's how you do a, a leak check on the SIM system. Again, the zero at the stack is greater than the zero at the cabinet. There's a leak in the system. Um, I've performed this on my uh, monthly uh, checks. All right. Let's find the leak. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to cap off uh, the sample flow while the sample pump, pump is running. The sample bypass pressure gauges and flow meters should go to zero. Typically, we're going to start at the heated sample line. We're going to move the heated sample line off and uh, cap it off. And we're looking for no flow condition, no flow and pressure. So those flow meters and pressure gauges should go to zero. Okay, if the sample bypass uh, gauges and flow meters indicate flow, the result is a negative pressure reading or vacuum leak. We're, we're sucking in gas uh, from the pump back through the system. The sample filter, the cooler, could be the drain pump, heated sample line up at the probe. We're gonna, we want to isolate this uh, in the uh, shelter or cabinet first because I mean who likes going up the stack? 
Not me. Anyway. Okay, so we're, what we're talking about, uh, let's see, cap off the inlet of a sample pond. And in, in reality, like I just talked about, the problem we had last week with the customer, the most common cause of a leak is the sample pump. So we can cap off uh, the sample pump and uh, we're going to look for zero pressure flow, indicates the pump's good. We're going to move on to the, the filter, the cooler, and uh, go back towards the, uh, the probe. Um, there we go. We're going to cap off the uh, inlet to the cooler, and again, zero indicate indicate indications of uh, flow and pressure. It's going to indicate uh, you know no leak in the cabinet. And there are times when I have to go up to the probe and <clears throat> cap off the uh, the sample line. Now remember, almost all our sample lines are 5 sixteenths. So make sure you have a 5 sixteenths <clears throat> cap and uh, plug. There are times the, uh, the heated sample line will uh, get a leak in it. And the stainless lines, I've seen them leak you know, right at the cooler. You look right where it uh, tubes into the cooler, and there could be a little hairline crack there. That tubing is uh, really thin tubing, and over time, it can uh, develop a crack in the leak there, so be aware of that. Okay, so we're up at the probe here. Uh, we're gonna rebuild the probe with the gaskets and all rings. Cap off the back force line at the probe, and we're gonna flow the zero gas. A lot of times the back force line can leak, or the back force valve could leak air all the way up to the uh, probe and, and back. So we should have a good uh, a leak check there. I mean, we checked all the uh, negative pressure test. Um, if, the, if the stack zero is good or cannot be accomplished, we're going to move on to a positive pressure test. You know, we're going to check all the, the, the fittings there, the tubings, and I think a lot of people have uh, the tendency to over -tight, tighten all these uh, these fittings, uh, these quarter inch fittings, and especially on the Teflon tubing, you know, that goes on the pump. A lot of times I've seen them over tight, over tighten there, and you can grab the tubing and, you know, shake it, pull it, and it'll pull right off, and there's your leak right there. Uh, the permeation dryer, most of our systems have a, a permeation dryer. Uh, or the sample goes through a 52 bundle and sometimes the tubes break off and we can get a pressure leak there. So we can bypass that to, trouble, to troubleshoot that. Uh, some of our systems have a bypass manifold, uh, PVC uh, manifold with uh, fittings coming off that, could be two or three fittings. And sometimes those get over tightened and uh, split the PVC. Uh, we're increasing the calibration flow, the maximum cast, uh, capacity. Pack the flow meter, uh, pack the ball all the way up to the top. So we're going to introduce, you know, we should, if we're pulling down six liters, seven liters should be plenty. But if we also we put up 10 liters, and uh, all of a sudden we're getting a good zero. We got a pressure leak somewhere in the system. It could be a regulator. Some of these older systems, the uh, the diaphragms in the uh, sample flow meter 
or sample pressure gauges regulators. Sample pressure regulators dry out and crack, and then they'll leak, uh, you know, the process gas into the uh, the cabinet shelter there. I did have a job uh, where we got a leak in the uh, calibration uh, line going up the stack. We ran a new one up there, and we're good. So let's look at a, a typical sample pump. And again, everything to the, the left here is under vacuum. So the guy uh, changes the filter here, doesn't get it tight, doesn't get it set right, and um, there's a common place for a leak right there. A uh, quick check uh, on the pump. The process flow valves typically mounted on the front panel. If you close that off all the way, uh, clockwise, you should be dead ending the pump. So here's, here's again, there's your bypass flow meter. The system only has uh, one sample flow meter for these basically three analyzers. So you close that process flow valve off. You should be dead at ending the pump, and you should have zero flow, zero flow here in the process flow or the back plus bypass flow meter and the sample flow meter. The gauge here should go to zero. Gauge here should go to zero. So, like I said, that's a quick check. You can close that off, and your flows here should drop to zero. If not, it's the pump. I mean, it could be the, the Teflon tubing uh, going to the pump. That Teflon tubing is uh, very soft. If it rubs on itself or any metal uh, tubing or piece, you'll uh, you'll see some white powder there, and that's that's the uh, Teflon falling apart. It'll actually rub a hole in the tubing there. So tubing here, and then of course this is on the pressure side. But anyway, here's what we're talking about. We're talking about, hey, let's pull it, pull the uh, heated sample line off, a 5 sixteenths heated sample line, uh, cap it off, and again, we cap this off here at the cooler, zero flow here, zero flow here. If we don't, we can move to the, the filter, so we'll bypass the uh, the cooler here. So we'll, we'll cap it off, off there. And again, we should have zero flow here, <clears throat> zero flow here. You know, if not, let's look at this uh, filter, gasket, bowl. And again, these are that's a glass bowl, and uh, if you drop it, you're gonna break it. I've done it, so be aware of that. I keep a spare one of those. But again, here's our drain pump. If uh, that tube is not changed on an annual basis, you could get a, a leak right here. We'll suck air up here, and you know, guess what? You'll also get the, the condensate's not going to uh, drain out. It's going to go here in the filter and uh, give you a water alarm. Shut the pump off. Hopefully the pump is uh, plugged into its uh, dedicated circuit. I've seen plenty of times that's not plugged into the ded dedicated circuit and you're going to get a water alarm and you're going to pump water into the analyzers. Okay, so uh, we cap it off here at the cooler. Everything's good. We're dead ended. And uh, we're good to climb the stack. <clears throat> we're going to cap off the heated sample line. Again, this is going to be a two man job. Need a guy down in the shack, a guy up on the stack, capping it off. And we're going to look for. Uh, 
no flow condition again. While you're up there, we build the probe. Again, here's our uh, back bush one right here. We're going to cap that off at the probe. Um, it could have a leak up here, it could have a leak down here. And here's our back flush valve. Sometimes those leak. Can pressure side, you please check the uh, vacuum side. Uh, we're over here on the pressure side now. Here's our permeation dryer right here, membrane dryer, permeation dryer. 50 little tubes in this half inch uh, two foot tube here. So we can bypass that and uh, see if we, we can get a good uh, calibration there. Uh, our manifold here, again, sometimes these fittings get over tightened and uh, split the PVC. And, uh, you know, give us more, more pressure into the system here, losing pressure. Uh, let's see. Of course, I can't hear anybody. So if there's any questions, uh, you know, ask somebody else. But, uh, I'll be available here in a minute. Let's see. Uh, common sense leaks, leak areas. Sample pump diaphragm, sample pump tubing, back flush line at the shelter and probe, the back flush valve, the sample filter, uh, the drain pump tubing. No rings in the gaskets. I mean, on the, on the low temperature probe, those gaskets and old grains, believe me, last a long time. I've seen them go over 10 years without people changing the filter. Anyway, uh, that's my little presentation there. Uh, I'll get out of here and maybe I can, uh, hopefully everybody heard that. And hopefully I can uh, answer some questions here. Thanks, Eric. Okay, um, is there any questions or? Nope, I think you're good. That's it, show's over? Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody.